curb blog. I was transported into a faraway land of Monster Rancher Flint and Digimon 2. Woke up on a Sunday to watch some anime, cause they were different from other cartoons. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so I don't know if uh, you all have noticed, but it's April, which means around these parts, it's anime April. Uh, I didn't have time for a whole little uh, intro video, I figured why waste the time and just get right into it. Um, I don't know if I'll be having, you know, that much this year, certainly not something like, you know, twice a week or whatever, like usual, because, uh, you know, busy with work on the game and such, but I wanted to do a couple things. Uh, unfortunately, I did not have time to watch uh, as many new shows this year as I uh, had been wanting to, but I still did want to do a couple little curb logs just to tie some things over over uh, the weekends and everything. So to start off with, um, so I, I didn't get requested to do uh, any of the ones I'm going to talk about. I actually just thought this would make a fun little uh, sort of different one than usual. I'm not going to be talking about a specific show. I'm going to be talking about a couple, uh, but particularly as part of a, uh, a certain block. Uh, I believe I did one about Adult Swim, and I want to say maybe I did one about Toonami. Uh, although with Toonami, it's kind of different because I've done actual individual reviews on most of the uh, the shows that were on that you know that that uh, that block at the time. Uh, but this was a little bit of a different one. Uh, so this is regarding a, a little semi short lived. I, I guess I don't know how long it actually stayed around for, but uh, a block that was uh, first on uh, Fox family. And then I believe switched to ABC family after a while. I don't know if it was how the you know rights of that got transferred or who owns what or whatever, but nonetheless, uh, it was a little block called made in Japan. Uh, this was on Sunday mornings for two hours. I forget if it was uh, from seven to nine or eight to 10 or whatever, but nonetheless, it was four shows. It was uh, the, <laughs> For whatever reason, uh, the Ruby Spears American Mega Man cartoon, uh, followed by uh, Monster Rancher, uh, followed by Flint the Time Detective, and followed by uh, Digimon, uh, the early seasons of Digimon at that time. Um, so I forget exactly how I happened to cross this one morning. I think I was uh, I was over at my dad's house, and um, I just happened to be flipping through the channels because Sunday at the time wasn't a day. Actually, yeah, this was kind of the birth of Sunday becoming a day that I would actually keep up with shows that were airing. Um, I had previously seen the um, uh, the Mega Man cartoon on, like, I don't know if it was ever syndicated, but I definitely saw it on, on like, another channel at some point uh, a few years before that. And uh, so I was already familiar with that one. But the other three uh, were semi-new to me. I had seen a little bit of Digimon stuff, um, I think, on on just like the regular Fox Kids uh, block, just at some point intermittently, uh, might have rented a, a VHS tape or something because I was morbidly curious at the time, and then I turned my nose up at it like a, like a scrub. But I'll get to that because I I'll, 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 I'll digi little little Digimon story to tell. Um, but yeah, so this was my introduction to a few shows. This was uh, I guess like would have been early two thousands. Um, so this was still kind of in the era of like you know I was I had gotten to know the likes of. Pokemon, Dragon Ball, Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, I'd certainly become an anime fan by that point, and I had also known, uh, you know, I, I think, I'm pretty sure by that point that uh, these shows that I watched that were a little different uh, were from Japan, and I, I, I guess by that point I knew the term anime. Um, but this was kind of my first introduction, I guess, into, um, I guess, sort of the more cultural side, because uh, before I go into the shows themselves, uh, they actually had these little kind of... Um, uh, I don't know if they were considered interstitials, I guess, whatever you call them, like the little, um, you know, intro and outro, like, we'll be back to made in Japan type, kind of things. And they would have these little factoids about, like, did you know that uh, in Japan, people usually shower off before taking a bath, like that kind of thing, like little, just little tiny, like cultural anecdotes uh, to go along with the theme. And I remember being all kind of like slick and white. It was almost kind of like a, like an anti tsunami in a way, because like tsunami was all like dark and space and you know kind of uh, and, and like like cool in that sort of way this one was more like white and sleek and ethereal kind of like the uh, Wii and Wii U ads a little bit kind of in that sort of style um so it was interesting and had, had some finesse to it there was some creativity behind it and um I think also intermittently they would have like some of their usual like Fox Kids interviews and like little personality things or whatever I think it was probably just like an extension of uh Fox Kids in in some way shape or form I don't know how it worked and you know when it moved to ABC but nonetheless so Monster Rancher, uh, went in knowing absolutely nothing about this one. I, I hadn't even heard of the PlayStation games. Uh, by that time, my uh, relationship with uh, you know PlayStation was just through whatever I'd play at Mike's place. And I don't think that he, uh, I don't think Mike Lucas had 
the original Monster Rancher. Maybe he might have rented it or something. But uh, yes, I knew nothing about this. And I think I just got thrown right in, saw all these freaking bizarre characters. And I was like, what the hell is this show? Of course, at the time, since this was still, um, I guess, relatively early on within, uh, you know, Pokemon's dominance, this still would have been like within the first a uh, few years of which, and I, I think by this time, I want to say Gold and Silver was out, so it's not like it was still, like, new, new or, or anything, but there was, of course, that running joke that, like, there were the three, uh, quote-unquote, competing franchises of um, monster collecting and raising video game-inspired anime, you know, giant toy franchises and everything between uh, Pokemon, Digimon, and Monster Rancher. Of course, we all know the, the truth is that there was no real competition. I mean, some might say that, that there was a little bit with Pokemon and Digimon at the time, certainly not now, uh, but Monster Rancher, I, I think for all that it was worth, was never a real contender. I mean, even with its, uh, you know, kind of trying to be ahead of its time sort of gimmick with the whole, like, scan in a CD and you'll create a monster thing or whatever, I think it was a little... I don't know if the video games are actually any good. I mean, somebody in the comments can please feel free to defend them, but I, I, I have no real thoughts about them one way or the other. But in terms of watching the show, I remember, like, uh, I, I will give it some credit. I kind of pretty much immediately got what the hell was going on from, like, the random episode that I was tossed into. Um, of course, this is probably due to the fact that, like, every other episode, the gang of main characters would continue to repeat over and over and over what they were doing uh, in terms of looking for the phoenix and trying to stop the evil move as you know, reminded from the awful theme song. Shout out to Lanny Pator for performing that shitty <laughs> rendition of the theme song on one of the Team Four Star streams or something. Anyway, um, but yeah, I uh, immediately got, like, I, I understood what was going on with it, and I was, uh, you know, interested enough by, I guess, the very varied, we'll say, and a pretty large amount of main characters, because, of course, we had Genki and um, the girl whose name I forget, who was, like, the walking plot device with the pendant thing, and uh, Mochi, Tiger, Golem, Suezo, Hare, uh, as the main five animals and all that shit. Um, uh, you know, and, and so uh, I, I recall some random episodes such as... Uh, the um the 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 siren thing that was in the lake that all the monsters like get head over heels for and then uh remember getting really angry when it turned out that fire was the weakness of a water elemental character of some kind uh i remember the uh the four evil uh like emperor guys or whatever like the four super monsters that were like golly uh not golly uh, uh moose underlings golly was one of them uh, yeah, it was Gally, and then there was, uh, Pixie, I think, was, like, the, the evil, like, Pixie girl or whatever, who, like, had a whole, like, oh, she turns out to be a good guy, and then she sacrifices herself, and etc. And, uh, I just kind of followed it along, like, as much as I could. I think I would just kind of catch certain episodes here and there. I, I would certainly miss some. Uh, I think eventually I had gone back, like, later out of curiosity to watch, like, the early episodes where, like, everything first starts. I had no idea that there was this whole thing where, where like, Genki, I guess, like, is in the game world or something a shrug uh but yeah he's he just gets in there and and then I, of course i do vividly remember seeing uh but actually i think i never saw the the ending or i might have so if somebody knows the show better than me then then you can probably tell me in the comments but so i remember the first of all the the big twist being that moo the big evil monster guy turns out to just be the girl's like like dad was it holly if was holly her name i think something like that but he turns out to be her father who, like, you know, left home or whatever, you know, generic backstory. Uh, and then they do eventually fight him, and they and his he, the, he becomes more powerful by feeding on their hatred. And they're all, like, screaming and yelling and, like, oh, we hate you so much. He's like, yes, feed me. It's me, Paul Dobson, doing my Naraku shit before Inuyasha came out, Brr, whatever. I love Paul Dobson's voice. He's fantastic. Anyway, uh, and then I think he gets, like, overflow with too much hate, and then he, like, almost explodes from it or something. I think maybe they kill him. And then the, the twist of they find out, oh, the phoenix we were, that we were looking for, oh, we found its body, but we don't know where its soul is, and it was divided into five pieces. And, oh, how convenient that the five of us are the five pieces of the fucking phoenix. <laughs> so, and then I, I vividly remember... The last episode, vividly is the the, the key word of this curb log. Uh, the I think the last episode that I saw, and I don't know if it was the ending, but I think that like somehow maybe I'm crossing things together. But they I think they get they awaken the phoenix, they fight Mu, and then Genki like wakes up in his room, and he's and I don't know if they were trying to pull the whole like oh it was all a dream bullshit, but I think he's like out in the rain, he, like sees 
like 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 hallucinations of mochi being like i love you cheeky mochi mochi or whatever and i'm like you know you don't got shit on pikachu you don't even got shit on agumon and that's saying something but uh yeah so that one kind of came to a bitter close and i i never know i don't i don't i feel like i don't know for certain if that was the real ending or not but it, it certainly was like what the fuck man that's not okay <laughs> So yeah, that was my experience with Monster Rancher, I guess. But uh, on a more positive note, um, a show that I... Okay, so this show probably wasn't actually, like, good. But a show that I did uh, enjoy quite a bit was the third one on this uh, this roster. This was probably the one that I enjoyed... No, actually, this was definitely the one that I enjoyed the most of this roster. Even though, you know, I, I know people have fond memories of Digimon Adventure 1 and 2... Uh, and Monster Rancher, and even you know some meme-worthy shit from the Mega Man Ruby Spears cartoon. But the one that I liked the most of this block uh, was Flint the Time Detective. Um, I I never like went looking for like the Japanese version or anything like years later when like I was doing that, and now it's much easier to do that. Although I, not that the show has any kind of like legal release now, I don't even know who has it. If anybody does have it, uh, nonetheless, yeah, I would. Uh, I was following this show, and similarly, I, I missed the first couple episodes. I think I did way later see them in reruns, um, but uh, the same kind of thing. I was just kind of f- like thrown into it, and I got enough of a gist of what the hell was going on that uh, I was uh, able to follow it and everything. And funnily enough, it, it fit kind of right along the lines of like those same kind of uh, toy-driven sort of shows. But something about this one, I I really liked, uh, and I think actually, no, I I know what it was. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Flint the Time Detective, because this was a fucking obscure show, this is probably the one that most people have no idea what the hell this was. It was a, it was a show about a little caveman boy who gets, uh, re- he, he gets, like, fossilized by this evil time-traveling, like, Team Rockety, I mean, I don't know if she predates or comes after Team Rocket, but this, 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 this crazy-ass woman that uh, was called Petrofina in the English dub, uh, and, uh, she and her two little doofus Meowth and James equivalents, uh, we're going around time looking for these little creature things called, uh, uh, like, what was it? Uh, time shifters, I think was what it was. Again, I'm using the dub terminology. I don't, I don't know the original Japanese lingo, so I apologize to any of the hardcore fans of Flint the Time Detective's Japanese title that I don't even know. So that, that goes to show you how I have to turn in my fucking anime fandom cred. Nonetheless, yeah, so, uh, the, the, the little boy and his, uh, his dad get fossilized. And then, like, millions of years later, they get unfossilized in the future uh, by this one professor dude or whatever, and his, his, his like, niece and nephew or something, I think. Uh, maybe they were, this, they were his kids. I don't know. But And then uh, Flint is the little caveman boy, and then his dad gets stuck as a fossilized, uh, like, like, stone hammer or, like, an axe or something and becomes his weapon. So his dad is his weapon, which is adorable and hilarious. And then he and the, the, the two kids, because, sure, the two kids are going to go with him, uh, go time traveling in this, like, magical bike thing uh, to different time periods to prevent this Petrofina character and, and all that. And she works for some evil criminal organization or some bullshit uh, from collecting these uh, time shifter creatures. And, uh, you know, so they, they, tra- they go to di- all sorts of different uh, historical figures, uh, you know, historical time periods. You know, they, they meet like Vincent van Gogh. They meet Babe Ruth, you know, all these different, the Wright brothers. And uh, all of these different historical figures come into contact with these uh, time shifter, like little, they're basically like glorified little Pokemon creatures. Again, I don't remember if this show technically came after Pokemon. For all I know, it was probably another one of those sort of cash-in things, but I have no idea if there was like merchandise or anything. I don't know. I don't know. I just saw it on Sunday mornings. It was adorable. I liked it. And uh, <laughs> someday maybe I'll make a, a, a Pokesember curb log, maybe even like later this year or something I'll do this. But um, at the time I was like, this was before Ruby and Sapphire. Okay, yeah, yeah. So gold and silver was a thing by this point. Um, I made up my own like entire concept for like a third Pokemon generation. And I'm sure a lot of other kids with way too much time on their hands did this shit too. But I made uh, Pokemon turquoise and lavender, which, you know, yeah, really great combinations of colors there. Uh, Easter puke colors. Anyway, <laughs> happy Easter. Uh, yeah, and so the, the thing was, and it's funny because I, I, I felt like such a douchebag because I tricked Mike and he, because he didn't know about the show. Like, Flint the Time Detective was like this little secret thing that was all to myself. And then I would play this, like, this fake Pokemon thing with, with Mike once in a while. And I basically made all the time shifters into Pokemon because also, I remember, um, they each had a, uh, like, con version of themselves where they become, like, an evil version. It was like, you know, uh, Levelot and then Levelot Con, and then they would, 
uh, later get like a powered up form with like, it was like a good version. It was like like Love a Lot Master or some shit. So they all had like a, like a they had their little cutesy like Pokemon like icon form, and then they all had their um, they had their like evil oh no I'm possessed by the villains form, and they had their you know I'm good and super powerful and I'm gonna turn into like a, a fucking like Ultraman looking thing or whatever, and I'll fight against the next bad guy machine thing that they have because it's literally Team Rocket. <laughs> Uh, so I, I made like the transformations into like their different, uh, evolutions for this fake Pokemon thing I did. But yeah, then one morning, one fateful morning, I remember Mike was like, hmm. So I remember, uh, seeing Bubblegum on an episode of some anime I caught on Sunday morning, this Flint the Time Detective thing. You think you're real clever, don't you? And I'm like, I deceived you. I'm sorry. I lied. I'm a piece of shit. It was the worst thing I could ever do as an artist. Nonetheless, um, uh, yeah, so I've, I followed this show for quite a while. I'm pretty sure I saw almost every episode of it, uh, and I definitely watched all the way to the end because they did air uh, the entire thing front to back. They did the whole show. And uh, well, again, like, like I said, I'm sure it's not in retrospect like a great show, but although I will say this, I do remember um, I, was, I, was, uh, I was watching just some random crap with uh, Mac uh, in a Skype call. This was a couple of years ago now. And uh, I was just like reminded of this show out of nowhere, and I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah." And we, you know, Mac is the the, the few anime that uh, of the very very small handful of anime that Mac has ever really laid eyes upon. Um, he's actually mostly familiar, from what I understand, with the um, Saturday morning esque kind of you know toy driven ones like these. And uh, but he had never seen. I don't even know if it aired in Canada. For all I know, uh, probably not. But. Uh, I, I mentioned the like the basic premise of it, and I pulled up an episode. There were these uh, these these time shifter things called the the Cardians. They were like these little, I think like four little like Power Rangery looking little like they they were kind of like the Axum Rangers from from Mario RPG. That kind of like tiny sort of chipified look to them, and they like combine together into like a little like like super Megazord thing or something. And I was like, hey, this, this is a cute little fun episode. Let's watch this. And we watched it. We watched it together. And he didn't. He didn't. He didn't know much of anything about it going into it. He was like, hey, that was that was kind of fun. That was kind of cute. It was it was alright. Like, yeah, it was nice. Uh, yeah. So you know, it, it, I, that's one that like I don't even know. There probably isn't like a, like a DVD set of it or anything. I, you'd probably have to just like go digging for it somewhere to even find that show. Not that I want to promote piracy here, but if there's no other way, you know, if, if you're ever curious, Flint the Time Detective. I recommend it. Question mark. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then uh, I guess last but not least is Digimon, of course. Um, so, you know, already a few years ago by this point, uh, several Pokesembers ago, I did a, uh, a Pokemon versus Digimon sort of um, review. Actually, what am I saying? No, I, I did both a, uh, a Pokemon Digimon like comparison one and, and also just a straight up Digimon Kerblog with uh, Ben Diskin. Uh, so I've said most of what I have to say about Digimon kind of already, but I'll tell one quick story, and I probably already told this, but I'll, I'll just tell it again because it's related directly to the Made in Japan block. Basically, I was keeping up with the show kind of intermittently uh, as it was airing on here, and I guess if I would catch an episode on Fox Kids or whatever, I don't, I don't know. Um, but I remember, uh, I, I would like vaguely sometimes, I, eh, I guess I feel like just keeping this on. I just, I'm in a good mood after watching Flint the Time Detective. Sure, I'll keep this Digimon episode on. Who cares? And... Um, you know, I, I would I would miss a lot of stuff. Like I didn't see a lot of like the Edamon stuff, for, like from Adventure One. But I do distinctly remember there was one morning where I got up like usual uh, to uh, you know watch the the usual stuff that would be on the block, and uh, instead there was a Digimon marathon, and I forget exactly like where it came. Well, the, the first one that I was seeing of this marathon, but the it, it was it was of the entire Myotismon arc. Uh, like, or specifically all the stuff that was happening, like, in the in the city, like, when they go back home or whatever. Uh, I, you know, I don't know the exact details of everything. But I remember I just came in on one of those episodes. Uh, I think I probably saw the, you know, tearful moment of Wizard Mom getting killed and Gato Mon standing up for herself and uh, Demi Debbie Mon getting eaten and, you know, the, the arrows get shot through the hearts and... Koromon pooping in a in a car backseat and whatever and and then War Greymon and Metal Garurumon and all that in the big final fight and then Ven Venom Myotismon has a weird demon thing in his crotch fuck if I know I I just sat back and I watched that whole arc and I was like okay that was fun I enjoyed that whatever <laughs> like that was just my little weird experience with Digimon that was somewhat positive but yeah so that's it those are some just wanted to recount some fun little memories uh, I have no idea of very many other people saw this block i mean it was only an american thing so i apologize to all my uh you know international fans although if to anybody out there in general if you had if you have any memories specifically i guess more so of monster rancher and flint the time detective 
uh, Digimon, you know, that I've already kind of covered most of that. But uh, let me know your thoughts about any of these shows, any memories. If, did you happen to see them on this block? Did you see them anywhere else? Did these shows air on other places around? I don't know. I'm curious uh, for some other perspective, uh, other perspectives on these shows and kind of just how they sort of got around the U.S. sort of. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this is just a little quick one I wanted to do to do sort of semi kick off anime April in this kind of slow, sleepy kind of way. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've, I've got a couple other ones that I want to do. Um, certainly the Dragon Ball Super finale one will be happening this month. Uh, Vegito EX, uh, Mike Libri is in the process of editing it, but that one is going to be awesome. It's also a record-breaking curb log uh, to be happening very soon. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so look forward to that. And uh, otherwise, I'll be getting back to animation streaming and as for the usual. But yeah, thanks for tuning in, Le leaving your thoughts in the comments below. If you have any other suggestions for anime series that I haven't covered on previous curb blogs already, uh, you can leave a comment about that too if you like. Uh, check out the uh, anime curb blogs pl playlist on there for uh, all the ones that I've already covered so you're not asking for ones that you may already be able to see. But uh, yeah, thanks for listening, and I'll catch you all later. Bye.